Hello, can you see me? Here I am uh, on the ILFL Soccer Night Show and I'm standing next to this, sitting next to this. Look, I thought this could take pride of place. This is the UK BFC Championship Trophy. Uh, the final uh, is going to take place at the Northampton Town uh, Football Club uh, in June. But everything happened yesterday uh, and we're going to discuss a little bit about what happened. We're going to show you uh, some extended highlights next week because we just didn't have time to put together the whole highlights package for you in time for tonight's show. But I promise we'll do it yet, uh, next week and we'll speak a little bit more about it. But we can talk briefly uh, about the championship itself, Rash. Uh, good tournament. Brilliant tournament. First of all, if I can just say uh, thanks to the host, uh, Shapla Lee from Birmingham, Habib Bai, Hawk Bai and all the other volunteers. They did a brilliant job. Uh, thanks to all the 16 teams who participated, a lot of teams from Newcastle, Sheffield, York, Bradford, Leeds, etc. A lot of travelling uh, and obviously it was a brilliant day, brilliant tournament, no issues, no problems. Everyone always got along each other and there was some good football and, you know, I, I enjoyed the day itself, obviously, mm. for other reasons. But yeah. I think it was a brilliant day, organised, well organised, the pitches were brilliant and no issues and that's what we need to see and I think it was a brilliant uh, day altogether. It, it was indeed. Uh, and thanks to everybody uh, down at the pavilion at Moor Lane in Birmingham. Like we said, uh, good facility, good pitches. We had no problems uh, yesterday with anything. And the weather, it tried but couldn't spoil the day at, at all. We had good weather uh, and some good football was played. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you on screen the groups, uh, the results, and we're going to run through it quite quickly and maybe pick out one or two um, uh, highlighted games uh, and teams uh, if we can. So here we are uh, on the screen for you now. This was Group A, uh, and the teams that took part in that group uh, were West End Tigers, Spartak Luton, uh, Bromley, and the Lazelles uh, Strikers. You can see uh, goals were scored in most of that group there. Uh, for me, the, the two teams that got getting through there, uh, Luton, Spartak Luton and the Lazelle strikers were deserved, although uh, I have to say, Rush, uh, the London teams look strong, and, but Bromley in particular, um, good team, but couldn't find a win at I, all. I think that I know the key reason why. I think, uh, from what I understand, is a few of the players let them down, uh, uh, dropped out in the last minute, and a few players dropped out on a Friday night, so they had to make shift with the, sh with the team, but at the end of the day, they didn't lose, they drew all three games. Yeah, but it uh, wasn't enough. But it wasn't enough because in some groups, you know, it was, it was enough and some groups it wasn't. It's just luck of the days, really. But I think when you go to a competition like this, you need to be prepared. You need to have a full strength side. And I think that's what the drawback was. But at least they didn't lose any games. They can hold the hell, hell, hell high. Hold, hold your heads high, uh, Bromley. Here's Group B's uh, results for you. Uh, Cambridge Sporting, as opposed to Sporting Cambridge. Cambridge Sporting, Westwood, Jubadol, Bradford and Newark took part in that group. Uh, Newark bringing a lot of uh, youngsters uh, and doing really, really well, picking up seven points out of a possible nine in that group uh, and a good, strong young team going up from they, London. They've always had young players. It's just a matter of once they get to that stage, on, once they're 16 plus, it's continuing. So I'm not surprised. Uh, and they've been quite successful in the recent years. So they were one of the, one of the favourites. So justifiable, they topped the group. Uh, strong group, uh, Group C. Here are the four teams that took part in that group. We had Hawk and Eagle, London Tigers, the Leeds One Formation and Jamia. Um, and like I said, it was a tough group and not a group that London Tigers uh, ran away with uh, in the end. Um, they didn't lose, uh, but there were some tough games. I mean, they're only 20-minute games, so I think that, that, that was the key. That was the key thing. I think it suited a lot of the teams uh, with the short time period, so, because you knew if you couldn't score, if you can hold them back, then you can, you can be tactically concerned. It gives a chance to all other teams, so obviously the stronger side have to be really strong or be clinical. So I think time factor did affect a few teams, but uh, I know London Tigers still top the group, so or from Group C. Uh, group D, uh, as was said uh, earlier by Rash, uh, here's how it was possible to draw three games and go through, uh, which Bromley couldn't do. In Group D, the four teams that took part were Beaumont, Unity, MK, the Bengal Tigers and a team from North Hans, North Hans United, took part. And like I said, like I said, Rash, uh, Beaumont, as you can see, drawing three games there against Unity, uh, against North Hans uh, as well, uh, and a nil-nil against the Bengal Tigers. Was it a tough group? Uh, uh for me, I'm not going to be biased, we, we were confident, uh, but we couldn't finish off the chances. I think uh, that's what was key, because we had a 20 minutes uh, spell, we just couldn't finish the chances. But we did play well, we never went, uh, keep made a, f a fundamental error, one of the goals, and obviously it put a spanner in the works. But I think in the group stages, with the 20 minutes, 
strikers need to be clinical and they weren't and that obviously made things awkward or uh, difficult for all the teams in all the groups to be honest it then went forward uh, to the quarterfinals um we were looking forward to it uh, London Tigers uh, were up against uh, Beaumont. Uh, the Lazelle Strikers were up against Jubilee Bradford. Newark were playing Spartak Luton. And North Ants United were up against the team from Hawk and Eagle. Here are the results on the screen for you right now. This is how the quarterfinals ended up. Uh, Tigers went out uh, on a penalty shootout. I don't think I've heard myself say that at all. I think they always seem to win their penalty shoots at Tigers. Uh, but they went out four goals to three uh, against Beaumont. The Lazelle Strikers beat Bradford by a goal to nil. Newark beat in Spartak Luton by two goals to one. Luton will not be happy with themselves. They really fancied themselves making the semi-finals. And Hawk and Eagle maybe surprised themselves by beating North Ants United. But let's start with the Beaumont performance. That, that was a brilliant match to watch. Uh, it was end-to-end. -end, but uh, uh, again, without being biased, I think we dominated. We had more, create more chances. Surprisingly, the Tigers were more, more holding back. And we, we unsettled them. I think they couldn't come to our half. We had a lot of chances, but it was a brilliant match. And I think key things for our moment was because we rotated a lot of the players in the group stages, we were still fresh, there were no injuries, we had energy. And being there the night before, it helped. Because in the, we were there the night before, the whole squad was there, mm. and the squad was strong, uh, and we gave 100%. And obviously, on the penalties, Schumann made some brilliant saves. I think he made two really good saves, which obviously can clinch us and put us in a... Uh, semi-final, but I, I've got to mention Hawking Eagle, surprise. Mm. Brand new team, first time, going to a tournament, Absolutely. no expectation, and to actually go to the semi-final, a massive, massive world well done, and congratulations to uh, Camels and Hawking Eagle for getting to that, because no one actually saw them come in, and they actually produced, and North End was a decent side, credit to Hawking Eagle for getting there. But they, I think, sorry. No, I was only going to say, they did surprise themselves, and, um, but when you get to the semi-finals, as you heard me yeah. say earlier, you, you can smell it, you can almost smell it, so, but they were up against a very good, and, and do you think maybe youth and legs That's, maybe that played was the key, key in punch. the semi-final? I think, yeah, they gave everything in the quarter-final, and they didn't have uh, many younger players as compared to Newark. Newark still had the energy, still had the legs, and that showed, and obviously, it wasn't a matter of, uh, in the second half, they came with the goals and, and to overtook them. Uh, even the Luton game was very good, I'm going to say credit to Luton, they were a good side as well, I think they were unfortunate. Uh, they were one in up with New York, but they lost 2 1. But Hawk and Eagle, I think if they had a bit more youth or a couple of more legs or fresher, or if they rotated, I'm not sure how, how many players played all the games. But New York obviously dominated uh, and went through. It wasn't a surprise. But credit to them for getting the semi final itself is a massive achievement. Absolutely. And um, here's where I have to pick out, uh, for, for me personally, uh, my team at the tournament. Unfortunately, uh, I couldn't get around to see uh, many games. Uh, at all because I, I was a uh, part of a group of three officials who were officiating in Group A uh, and for me personally the standout team were the Lazelle Strikers. They a uh, fantastic bunch of guys who played with a lot of heart and a lot of spirit as a team uh, and had a guy playing up front. I, I don't know who you are but you do but if yeah. you tell me who you are I'll call you out by yeah. name next week on the show. Um, wearing number nine. Number nine he was brilliant. He fantastic was brilliant, yeah. player. Fantastic uh, player. He scored a brilliant goal against us in the semi final and I've heard before that they were one of the surprise teams. I think like the expectations always there with Birmingham, but this time round the performance I saw in the same final was definitely was brilliant. There. I think that was the best game. That, of the but that was a ding dong game. I mean, because obviously we were in the other game at the Hawking but we could hear that yeah. it was end to end it, and it in was. In the same final was nil nil. In our semi final, first half was three two five goals because it entered. So both teams wanted to. Both teams were pushing. I think that was the best game of the whole whole day for me. That was the best game because. The talent was there. You can see both teams were really technically good, defending, physical, and dribbling. The quality was there, and credit to both teams. You know that was a brilliant atmosphere, and I loved every minute. Obviously, from from Bournemouth's point of view, it was it was edgy stuff, but it was a very close game. And credit to Lazelle, it was a brilliant match, really match to watch. Uh, but luckily, we went through. But they scored the first goal. We came back straight away. They scored the second goal. We came back again, and then we managed to sneak one in. And then second half, we kind of contain, contained them, and you know. Managed to get our foot in the final. Like we said, um, fan fantastic tournament. Uh, well done to all teams who came from. Team from Newcastle who came all the way down to take part. The boys from Leeds who came down as well and came to mix it with everyone as well. Guys came from London, Milton Keynes, Northlands, and the host Birmingham. Y your team uh, were uh, credible, credible opponents. Uh, for everyone there. Um, you, you didn't make it. Um, like I said, for me, I saw some of the goals uh, of the day, but I only saw uh, one group. But I mean, th for me, the pick was the two goals that your, your boy scored. Uh, the free kicks from 25 yards out. Two dead balls, two fantastic free kicks. Uh, played really, really well. We're going to highlight more uh, about that uh, in next week's show, uh, where we'll be talking more 
about the final that will be taking place on the 2nd of June, like we said, at the Northampton FC st Stadium. It's the Sixfield Stadium up there in Northampton. It will be a 3 o'clock kickoff on the 2nd of June. Beaumont are there and they will be playing Newark. And as I think uh, was predicted on this show by Rashid himself, it's going to be an all London final. Uh, but I certainly will be up there to watch that because it's going to be a real tough game. It, it will be a tough game. Both teams uh, know each other, both know about history. Uh, both teams got a lot of young players and uh, a lot of technical players. So I'm looking forward to it. On the day, it's just a matter of obviously who gives the 100% and performs well. But it's not an easy game. It's not going to be an easy game. Um, we're going to talk about another tournament that's taking place uh, this Sunday as part of the Unity Cups uh, tournaments. We already had the Super Cup take place two weeks ago at Hackney Marshes. Here are the groups for the Legends Cup uh, that are going to be taking place uh, this Sunday. Uh, you can see they, the Group A games and the times that they're uh, kicking off. Hawk and Eagle playing the Aston Rangers, uh, another Birmingham side coming down. Hey, maybe there's something in the water up there in the Midlands. Uh, RASA, Berry Park, Saracens uh, joining uh, those other two teams in Group A. There are the Group B games. The London Tigers will be there to try and keep hold of a, a trophy that they are currently champions of. Oh. Uh, Shagor reunited, uh, Shanali Otith and uh, Revive Legends. Correct me, Rash. Silets are the Silet Legends of the That's holders. That's right, it is Silet. The yes. Tigers won it the year before. The year before. Is that Silet? So sorry for forgetting about you. How could I do that? Uh, group C, uh, smaller group because there are less teams uh, taking part in those groups C and D, but they include uh, the Beaumont Masters, Luton and West End, and Oldham uh, taking part. And I hear that Oldham have quite a decent side coming down. And into Group D, there it is. Select are there and they'll be taking on the Riverside Vets who will now be wanting to elevate their seven-a-side status uh, and championship form uh, into 11-a-side form, if you like, along with the MK Galacticos, our friends from Milton Keynes, coming down to take part in that as well. ILFL Legends Cup taking place at Hackney Marshes, as always. Uh, be there early, stay late, and let's hope that we can see some good football. We've been lucky the last two weeks to see some good football uh, in the UK BFC and in the Super Cup that happened the week before. I'm not going to ask you for any predictions uh, in that one, Rash. Um, the other thing that we need to talk about now, just very quickly, there were two games that took place uh, yesterday. It was the ILFL uh, Challenge Cup. I'm just trying to find the games for you. There they are. The ILFL Challenge Cup semi-finals that took place. Uh, look at that. Uh, Redcoat and Crusaders. I'm sure as a contest, it was closer than it looked, but Crusaders know how to score goals, and they managed to put six past Redco uh, against their constellation that happened there. Uh, and a key game, Wolfhamstow Red Star beating Arsenal by two goals to nil. We thought it was going to be close. We knew that a good Arsenal team would put up a good fight, but maybe Red Star, they want something out of the season after missing out on promotion and the second division championship. They will want something out of the season. They were two new winners. That will be the game, the game on paper that we spoke about, the Wolfhamstow Red Star game against Crusaders will take place this Sunday, the 1st of May. Uh, the venue will be the Hackney Masters show pitch. It will be a two o'clock kickoff. So these things will be running side by side alongside uh, with the Legends Cup. We'll have highlights of everything that happens in the Legends Cup. We'll have highlights of the Challenge Cup final. We'll also have our highlights of the UK BFC that happened yesterday as well. So a packed show to come uh, next Monday. And on that note, I will have to say a packed show tonight is coming to an end. So once again, thank you to our guests from Weavers, the Weavers Vets team that came in this evening to speak about uh, their team and their expectations uh, for VL7, which is coming up. Good luck to you guys who are taking part in the Legends Cup this weekend and also to the two teams who will be taking part in the Challenge Cup final. Hope to have one of you uh, on the show to talk about it on the following Monday. But for now, we are out of time. Thanks to Rashid. Thanks to all the guys behind the screen who are making it possible. And as always, thanks to you for watching the ILFL Soccer Night Show. We'll be back next Monday. So until then, it's good night.